Hello everybody watching on YouTube land and live here right now on Twitch. Welcome to another game news roundup. As always, we got the intro here. This is always live streamed on Twitch. We got Twitch check on right below me. Say hi YouTube people on Twitch where we go over the latest VG charge estimates when available, gaming news, monthly sales comparisons, etc. How long do these run for? However long it takes to go through everything. This looks like it might be a busy week. Hi, YouTube. I was here. Yes, Mr. Weeb was here. <sighs> Anyways, we're going to go over the latest VD charge estimates for the week. God of War Ragnarok launch, which Sony shipped a lot of consoles that week, and we're looking at nearly, well, 451,000 estimated PS5s sold. For the week ending November 12th, 463,000 for the Switch, 230,000 for the Series X and S. Um, lifetime sales, we got the Switch has topped 115 million. The PS5 has just crossed over 26 million. Series X and S has crossed over 18 million. Again, these are estimated sales, and as more data becomes available, adjustments do happen over time for them to get more accurate as well. Again, as always, as more data becomes available. So... Going into the article itself, um, yeah, as I said, the PS the PS5 has had its best week of 2022 with the launch of God of War Ragnarok and obviously Sony shipping far more PS5 consoles, a lot more in the U.S., more focus in the U.S. than we saw in Europe. Um, and also, this is the best week for PS5 sales since December the weekend in December 25th, 2021, where it sold 516,000 units, so... Sales for PS5 for the week ending. Wesker, thank you for the follow. And welcome to the stream. And, well, what is right now a YouTube video. Um, but, yeah, PS5 sales for the uh, week got a war launch. Uh, not that far off from the best one of the best weeks of last year, last holiday. And from what I'm seeing, and with Sony having stocked probably a lot of PS5s, we're probably going to be seeing... PS5 sales way up year over year. Speaking of year over year, PS5 sales are up 135,000 units compared to the same week last year, or about 43%. Series X and S sales are up uh, by about 17,000, 8%. Switch sales are down by almost 100,000, uh, 17.5%. But considering the Switch came out in March 2017, we're talking about 5.5%. Plus, over five and a half years later, sales being down is not really a surprise. And then the week after this, or would it be would that be the week ending November nineteenth? Uh, is the week Pokemon Scarlet and Violet launched, and which is looking like it's gonna be a very strong week for Pokemon sales, potentially breaking records. So I would expect really strong Switch sales. Um, and it's also the week that the Series S has seen a fifty dollar discount to two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, for those that don't know, yes, um, for the holidays, Microsoft has discounted the Series S by fifty dollars. Uh, not the Series X; that is still five hundred if you're able to find one. Uh, PS Five and Series X are still somewhat hard to find, depending on where you live. Uh, Series S is fairly easy to find, and Switch is even easier to find. Um, uh, gen over generation sales for PS Five versus the same week for the PS Four, and Series X and S versus the same week for the Xbox One, which will be the week ending. November 14th, 2015. They're actually both down. Uh, PS5 is down by nearly 145,000 units again. If there was more PS5 stock available, it would have all sold. Unless, you know, Sony somehow shipped, like, you know, millions of consoles in one single week. Um, and Xbox Series X is down by nearly 90,000 units compared to the same week for the Xbox One. However, uh, main reasons for this, um, this, is, this would be the week after Call of Duty Black Ops 3 launched. Um, it was also the same week we saw Fallout, Fallout 4 release for the PS4 and Xbox One, and Rise of the Tomb Raider for came out for the Xbox One, I think 360 and PC as well. And again, as I noted, PS5 and Series uh, X stock con continues to be fairly limited. And last-gen consoles, PS4 and Xbox One sales are dwindling. And at the end of the year, um, we will be stop. We will no longer be tracking both of those consoles. So whatever we're at the end of the year is what their final total is going to be. Um, a little over 117 million for the PS4. I may have the Xbox One a little over 51 million. Um, and breaking down our sales, our latest sales here, estimates for the weekend of November 12th. 
In the Americas, PS5 easily number one with 224,000 units sold. Switch at 156,000. Series X and S 129,000. Again, this is Americas, which is US, Canada, and Latin America all added up. And you see PS4, Xbox One dwindling pretty quickly. In Europe, uh, Sony didn't quite ship as many PS5s to Europe as it did to the US, but we saw about 139,000. PS5 sold in Europe, uh, 135,000 Switches, 68,000 for Series X and S. In Asia, Nintendo s continues to be the number one console in Asia with about 156,000 estimated consoles sold, 68,000 for the PS5 and 19,000 for the Series X and S. In Oceania, which is mainly Australia and New Zealand, uh, we basically have almost have a tie between the PS5 and Switch with about 18,000 each. Uh, sales wise and series X and S about 6,000 behind them with a little over 12,000 units sold um, But yeah, that is the latest VG charts estimates for the week And in November 12th the week of God of War which again caused PS5 sales to skyrocket which uh, looking at week on week PS5 sales did go up 175,000 units and I will be expecting I mean we'll see once the data actually starts coming in but uh, PS5 sales, I would expect, from Black Friday through Christmas will likely be above this week. And probably consistently above 500,000 units sold every week. But again, we'll see once more data starts rolling in each week. And week-on-week -week sales, we got Switch up 27,000, Series X and S 19,000. And year-to-day for 2022 through November 12th, Switch at 13.46 million units sold. PS5, 9 million units sold, and Series X and S, uh, 6.95 million. They had under 7 million sold uh, through 20, for 2022 so far. Um, we're looking at Series X and S. Uh, it's potentially we'll be going to have sold just over 10 million for the year, which will be the first time an Xbox console has sold over 10 million in a year since the 360 days. So... Series X and S has been, so far, the fastest-selling Xbox generation. We'll see how things are come later generation. Because Xbox 360 had a long lifespan. As well as getting a big boost uh, in sales when the Kinect launched. Especially in the U.S. Um, and we're going to go over some of our monthly sales comparison. Again, this these monthly sales comparison here. Currently through October. So for two weeks before what we just saw for the latest figures. But comparing PS5 versus the Series X and S, I say launch line, but they launched in the same month. Um, through October, through where it's now 24 months since it came out in November. You know, do the math there. You know, October, we month 24, so pretty much two years at this point with PS5 about 7.5 million ahead of the Series X and S through October. Um... What do we got here? With a 58.7% market share, which is actually down about 4% year over year compared to the 41.3% for the Series X and S, which is up 4% year over year. Um, again, earlier this year, uh, Series X and S, and actually last holiday, is actually outselling the PS5 in many parts of the world. Not everywhere, but in a lot of parts of the world, which was able to, as you see here, the gap did shrink a bit, and then in recent months, the PS5 has been able to grow the gap. Um... If anyone was wondering my expectations for this generation, I would expect PS5 to remain ahead for the rest of the generation, but a smaller gap than last generation. You know, we're talking about 117 million for the PS4 versus 51 million for the Xbox One, so more than two to one. I would, I would expect a much closer gap. You know, maybe 100 to 110 million for the PS5, maybe 70 to 80 million or 80, 75 to 85 million for the Series X and S. By the end of the generation, but we'll be seeing, we'll be getting a better idea next year when Starfield comes out how much of a boost uh, big AAA releases are going to give to Xbox sales. As I know a lot of people always say, uh, is Switch even comparable or is it such a, such a different market? Um, I do have comparisons with PS5 and Xbox compared to the Switch, uh, but this is just a specific PS5 to Xbox comparison. Uh, but um, honestly, PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. They don't stand a chance of um, outselling lifetime Switch sales. Um, with more demand, I don't see the PS5 selling quite as much as the PS4. Not that it's going to sell terrible. I just expect it to sell a little bit less than the PS4 did. And the Switch is, the next couple of two to three weeks, is going to outsell 
the PS4 lifetime sales. Um, and by the end, and, uh, and not long after that, we'll also sell Game Boy. Um, curious, Dave. We currently have Switch at 115.18 million. PS4 again just here over 117 million. Um, with Pokemon Week and Black Friday, it might be enough for it to by the end of Black Friday week um, to top PS4. If not, it'll be Cyber Monday week. You know, the week after where Switch is going to top PS4. Become the fourth best-selling video game platform of all time. And then with holiday sales, it ain't going to take long for it to outsell the Game Boy to become the third best-selling video game platform of all time. And then after that, we'll see how long its legs are, how long is Nintendo going to support the Switch. When is the Switch successor going to come out? Again, Switch came out in March 2017. March 2023 is six years. I think that's too soon. I, and since we've heard no rumblings of a Switch successor... Uh, March 2024 will be my guess at the earliest we'll see a Switch 2, or whatever it'll be. Um, which is seven years after the uh, Switch. And potentially holiday 2024, or even maybe March 2025. Depends how long Nintendo wants to keep supporting the Switch. Again, next year, we're still seeing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC coming out, you know, the booster pack. Um, as well as... Um, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I almost said Breath of the Wild too, forgetting the actual name of it. But Tears of the Kingdom is also coming out. I mean, it'll just be two Switches duct taped together with some sort of additional motion controls. Oh, God. That's a terrible idea. Honestly, I think a Switch successor should be pretty much the Switch. Maybe with a bigger, slightly bigger screen. You know, a little bit of a slightly bigger screen. And obviously, whatever more power you... You know, being more powerful. And whatever they can keep a $300 price tag. The Switch has yet to see a price cut. You know, it launched at $300, it's still available for $300. And obviously you have the OLED at $350 now, and the Switch Lite at $200, but the Switch Lite is missing the dock and some other features. So, I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, I don't expect a Switch successor until March 2024 at the earliest. To March 2025. That's, that's the range I am giving. So we'll see if the Switch has enough legs in it. To potentially outsell the PS2 and the DS to become the best-selling video game console of all time. Or the platform, because I guess it's a hybrid. It's a console, but it's also a good, uh, handheld. Uh, we shall see. I actually own one. I know, shocking, right? It's the first Nintendo console I have owned since an N64 and Game Boy. With a very used copy of Pokemon Blue. Although this Game Boy doesn't work very well. This speaker doesn't work anymore. Also, there's no batteries in it because, uh, well, I don't feel like having batteries acid leak all over it. So, there's that. So, you know, we got that. But yeah, Switch successor, we'll see. I mean, I'm hoping it's basically just a more powerful Switch. That's, what I'll, that's all I'm hoping. But I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo releases another version of the Switch next year. Another minor redesign i know people are talking about a, a more powerful switch pro equivalent to like the ps4 pro or the xbox one x i i don't know maybe slightly more powerful probably not nothing significant i mean what could it be i'm not totally sure i mean maybe we'll see a price cut which i'm considering current sales and the current situation in the market eh i wouldn't mind not that i would expect a big price cut if there was one but anyways, going into more gaming news, or gaming news, more sales comparisons. Here we've got PS5 versus its predecessor, the PlayStation 4. Launch line sales through October 2022, so through the first 24 months. PS4 has been uh, tracking ahead of the PS5, of course. The obvious thing to say is PS4 was easy to find. PS5 has been sold out pretty much since launch. It's been tough to find one. Even if there are some weeks with more stock, it still sells out. Unlike with the PS4, which we didn't really see post-launch. Uh, but yeah, PS4 is currently uh, 2.8 million ahead of the PS5. In the latest month, sales were almost even. PS4 about 27,000 more. Um, and in the last 12 months, PS4 has increased its lead, or has sold 3.7 million units. Sold 3.7 million units more than the PS5. My goodness. And we shall see how sales are through this holiday. I expect really strong PS5 sales will be enough to... Be closing the gap to the PS4. We shall see over the next couple of months. But looking at um, God of War sales, and we'll, I mean, the biggest thing is how are sales going to be? 
from Black Friday at Christmas. I'm expecting 500,000 plus sales a week, but we shall see on stock. Sony did announce they did stockpile about 3.2 million PS5s at the end of the last quarter. And we'll see how much they're able to ship and get out to retailers during the holidays. Because it does take time to ship consoles, especially especially of late. Even if things have been improving, they're still not where they were. Uh, but moving on. Xbox Series X and S versus the Xbox One. Uh, Launch Alliance sales again through the first 24 months, October 2022. Series X and S is ahead of the Xbox One by nearly 3 million units, 2.94 million units, uh, estimated, of course. Uh, Series X and S sold about 168,000 more units in the most recent month and has sold about 1.2 million more over the last 12 months. <clears throat> also, um... If you're wondering, like, PS5 versus PS3 or Series X versus the 360 comparisons, those will be out uh, later this week. I'll probably get them written up either Tuesday or Wednesday, but then post them over the next several days. I like to, I want to get so With the Thanksgiving holiday, I want to get some stuff done ahead of time so I can just relax and then just have, to, you know, have the articles ready to go and just, you know, post them live, but... But yeah, um, Series X and S, if you're wondering, yes, is tracking ahead of the 360, as well as the Xbox One, and of course the original Xbox, which in the coming months will probably be able to sell on the original Xbox, which sold about, what, was about 24 million lifetime? I never remember the numbers off the, off the top of my head. The original Xbox is at, yeah, 24.65 million, which actually the PS5 in the last few weeks actually outsold the original Xbox as... Going to the Atari 2600, then you got the N64, Genesis, and then a big gap up to the SNES and Xbox One with around 50 million each, or just under 50 million, and a little over 50 million. And the Series X and S um, for 18.22 million. After this is the Master System, GameCube, and original Xbox. And you say Atari 2600 and whatnot. Again, this is all based on what data is available to us. So if you're wondering, hey, I could have sworn the console probably would have sold more. You're probably right, just there's no data for some of them. Why some of these, we have such very low sales. It's just what we have available to us. Uh, but anyways, uh, Switch comparisons now. Switch, compared to the PS4, again, through October. Of course, I was just talking about the other comparisons there. Um, but as you can see here... This red line is the Switch. This blue line is the PS4. As you can see, the Switch has been... The sales were relatively close, and then COVID and Animal Crossing happened, pretty much. And then the gap just has widened ever since. Um, which is now... Switch is almost 17 million ahead of the PS4 through October. Switch for 2 release date when? What? Wait. I don't think that's a... Th Thing. I know there's Ring Fit Adventure, which I've been half tempted to buy just so I could do some workouts, but but yeah, uh, Switch sales are crazy, or have been relatively crazy. However, compared to the DS, not so much. But of course, you know, look at the price of the Switch versus the DS. That makes a big difference. Um, through 60, 68 months, the DS is ahead of the Switch by 13.6 million units. Again, always estimated sales. Barring adjustments, that's what, what we're at. Um, now, at the, after this point, this, the DS has one half decent holiday left and then sales tank because the 3DS comes out and cuts the DS life fairly short. And Nintendo fairly quickly moved on to the 3DS once that came out. So we shall see. If it has longer legs, it has a chance to catch up and potentially outsell the DS, as, again, as well as the PS2. But we shall see over the next couple of years. Um, I think this holiday and through the end of next year will be good tell telling to see the odds are. So. I know how I feel. These are not how you feel. What, oh, having its legs chopped off. Because <laughs> um. the DS was on track to outsell the PS2 easily. If the 3DS came out six months later, it would, have no ch it would have had no problem doing it, but I digress. It is what it is, you know? Nintendo does what Nintendo do. <laughs> Who knows sometimes? Like, why would, why would that doesn't make any sense? The Switch, before it came out, I figured it was going to sell well. I figured it was going to be like, all right, you know, 3DS plus Wii U sales is what I figured its base would be, you know? That'd be like 90 million or something. 
Something like that, or just under 90 million. I thought that would be its lowest point. But, not considering I bought it. But, but yeah, Switch versus DS. We'll see how things are over the coming months. Obviously, the gap will likely close in November, December. That's why you see these big ups and downs, because they didn't launch at the same time, so the holidays are mismatched. So you see, like, Switch holiday, and then, whoop, DS holiday, Switch holiday, DS holiday, and it's crazy sales for a while. Switch holiday, DS holiday, etc., and then it kept going. And then we'll see. Switch holiday, we'll see how much it can bring back. And then, obviously, through its next holiday, be the big telling of, does it still have a chance? Or does it not, no longer have a chance? But I'll keep these comparisons going. These are done once a month. Um, but yeah, that is it for the latest monthly sales comparisons. Moving on, um, in UK, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet had the biggest UK launch of 2022. A game that is exclusive to one platform had the biggest launch in the UK. This is so far really the only data we have for last week. Um... And Japan data comes out on Thursdays usually, and then other are some stuff, uh, some other stuff comes out potentially like Thursday, Friday, or even the big, or like the following Monday. That's why I usually like to wait till today to do sales numbers for the t not the pre not the last week, but the week before last week. Because I like to wait for certain data to come in first before I roll the numbers. Yeah, um, be interesting to have a direct day versus day comparison. What we do are weekly estimates but those but i would say i would do those comparisons every week but i do it's like close to 20 of them and that's just would be uh spamming the site to say the least which is why i do them once a month and i usually like to do f post like four or five each week once all the data comes in for a specific month so mm. but anyways uh the three versions, yeah, three versions of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet debuted on the UK retail chart. That's right, three versions. Violet at fifty actually had fifty-two. Violet sold more than Scarlet. I was surprised. I mean, I was I was potentially getting I was thinking of getting Violet myself. Um, we have Violet accounted for fifty-two percent of sales. Again, these are retail sales only, no no digital sales. Um, and Scarlet debuted. Oh yeah, Violet debuted in first place. Scarlet in second place, and the dual pack in sixth place, but. Scarlet was 42% of sales, and the dual pack, 6% of people bought two versions of what is pretty much, I'd say pretty much the same game, although this is the first Pokemon game that actually has more, that actually has differences between the two versions. No offense to people who buy both versions. It just feels pointless, like, there's like maybe a dozen Pokemon that are different between the two versions, but at least with Scarlet and Violet, there's different Pokemon professors, which is why I'm going with Violet, because the Pokemon professor looks like the Giga Chad. Yeah, I know. It's a really stupid reason, but that's why I want to go with Violet over <laughs> over Scarlet. I mean, why not? Of course, the game is apparently a buggy mess with a lot of technical issues. But that didn't hamper sales, at least in launch week. Well, yeah, it had the biggest launch uh, in the UK of 2022 at retail, being the previous record holder of FIFA 23 by 4%. And mind you, FIFA is on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. And Switch. Actually, it is also on Switch. I, th I can't remember exactly what the version my version is on Switch or something. The Switch version is so outdated. I don't remember. Um, it also had the second biggest launch in Pokemon history in the UK behind Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, I didn't add it to this article, but that is also the high. Sun and Moon came out during peak Pokemon Go craze. So, but however, if you look at revenue, Scarlet and Violet actually had a bigger launch than Sun and Moon because uh, the average price of Scarlet and Violet was forty eight pounds. Versus Sun and Moon, which is 35 pounds, of course, you know. DS game? 3D? It was Sun and Moon on DS or 3DS? I, I can't remember. But, you know, a handheld versus a, well, a hybrid console. I was at around Wireless Heads that her Giga Chat Professor. Did we have, did we have photo? Oh, of, oh, one. God, all right, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on, Pokemon, Violet. I, I know this is this is going off the walls today, but it's fine. It's fine. It, it's, it'll do. All right. So, right here. He looks like the Giga Chad. All right, he, he looks like Giga Chad. 
Right there. What a chad, right? Isn't he such a chad? He is the Giga Chad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me. Giga Chad. You'll see it. The big D energy. Seriously, right? I mean, look at it. He. So, here's the professor. Pokemon Violet. Here is the Giga Chad. Do you see it? Even the hair. I mean, look at it. He looks like the Giga Chad. I realize why am I talking about this? I don't know. I mentioned it, and you guys are curious. Oh my goodness. Um. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um. First week sales for Pokemon Scarlet Violet in the UK out of retail were thirty six percent higher than Pokemon Sword and Shield. Seventy percent higher. Then Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Um, and 56% higher than Arceus. And I guess nothing on Let's Go was written. Um, Xbox Game Pass deals range from less than $1 million to 100 That, what? I know they've said Game Pass is profitable. I don't know how profitable. It could be like a dollar profitable. Or, you know, 50 cents profitable. Or it could be millions profitable. But yeah, I mean, I know some people buy Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for a dollar for three months. Some people spend the $15 a month. Some people use Microsoft Rewards to get Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for free. Yes, I am one of those people. If you don't know, uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, if you use Microsoft Rewards, you can earn enough rewards in a month. You gotta, you gotta spend like, you know, five, you know, three to five minutes a day. But you, you can technically earn enough in Microsoft Rewards to keep up Game Pass Ultimate. And actually get a little bit extra each month. Um, oh my god, you guys. People watching this on YouTube like, what the hell is happening? What is going on? Oh my goodness. Um, also, the launch of Pokemon Scarlet Violet helped boost Switch hardware sales for the biggest week in the UK of 2022. The sales up 62% week on week. However, it's specific that he did specifically stated best week of 2022. Didn't say, like, hey, sales were up compared to the same week last year. Um, so, we'll see. Um, and God of War Ragnarok in its second week. Again, this is this is Pokemon. This is last week's sales in the UK because these come out first. Um, again, posted by Games Industry. Data from GFK. Chart track. Uh, God of War Ragnarok sales dropped. Uh, 73% in its second week, which for such a, for a game like this, it's not a big surprise. It's like if you look at the box office for the biggest movies, seeing a drop of around 70% in its second week is not a huge surprise. You know, if a game that has such a huge launch, seeing a big drop in its second week, not a big shock. Um, and Sonic Frontiers in its second week fell from 4th to 10th place with sales down 64%. It's technically a smaller drop than God of War, but obviously had a much smaller launch than God of War did. Um, there was also some deals in the UK, uh, which saw PS PlayStation game sales increase. Uh, Last of Us Part 2 re-entered the charts in 18th place, um, as it was available for below £10. Spider-Man Miles Morales came in 26th place, uh, with sales up 292%. GT7, 30th place, with sales up 228% week on week. Last of Us Part 1! Apparently it's already discounted. It came out in September. Um, it's up to 38th place with sales up 454% uh, week on week. Again, these are UK retail sales specifically. This does not include digital sales. And of course, when the digital sales charts do come out, it does not include Nintendo. Because Nintendo does not share its digital sales uh, with, these retail, with, with, with these weekly charts. Um, let's see. Oh, and Microsoft... Um, came out today, uh, reported by the New York Times, Microsoft has offered a deal to Sony on November 11th, so, so about a week and a half ago, uh, to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for 10 years. Uh, apparently Sony declined to comment on the reported offer. Um, but yeah, the future of Call of Duty, um, has been the main focus for Microsoft's proposed $68.7 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. And whether or not it will still release on PlayStation in the future or well, or not release on PlayStation in the future. I, I mean, I should mind you the fact how many times I've written articles on this where they basically say they're going to treat 
Call of Duty like it does Minecraft. Microsoft doesn't have a deal with Sony or Nintendo to keep Minecraft still on the Switch or the PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 4. But they still are, including Minecraft Dungeons and the upcoming Minecraft Legends. So it sounds like they will keep Call of Duty, uh, you know, multi-platform. I mean, they've even mentioned, if it's possible, release it on Nintendo platforms. So, you know, uh, I guess people were, well, it if they potentially just say, screw it, we'll pull it. But. Uh, BRB, all right, sounds good, Ness. Yeah, I, I don't really see them, considering Call of Duty sells best on PlayStation. The main thing is, come the future, all marketing for Call of Duty, you know, if this deal goes through, you'll see the Xbox logo or the Game Pass logo at the end of commercials, and obviously you'll be seeing Call of Duty on Game Pass day one. I will still be releasing on PlayStation consoles, obviously, you know, Xbox as well, PC, uh, potentially Nintendo. Who knows? Maybe we'll see it on Nintendo. Probably via the cloud. I, there's no way in hell I could see any Call of Duty game have, uh, ha having any chance of running. Wow included with Game Pass when? I have no idea. Probably never. I don't see it coming to Game Pass. I mean, Wow is only on PC. Through is it Blizzard net? I don't, I don't play WoW, so I don't quite know. But isn't like 15... Isn't like WoW like 15 bucks a month? You already hear for us, remember me. No, I'm not saying it's never going to happen. It's just, I just I just want to say it's highly unlikely. Microsoft could. They might say, screw it. All right, you everyone who's subbed to WoW, it's fine. Just, just go to Game Pass. It's the same price. And you get hundreds of other games. Who knows? But I would say with probably not... Will there be perks? Like, if, if you go have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, there are free perks that you can get. I wouldn't be surprised if you get some free WoW perks or something. I see some free... I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember. I don't really use them that often. Like, I've seen Spotify for free or Discord, Nitro for free. Not that I can use it because I've had Nitro in the past. But <sighs> maybe some free perks. Or Fortnite perks. That's another thing. Fortnite perks and whatnot. So, but yeah, Microsoft offered a deal to Sony to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for 10 years. Um, moving on. Xbox um, Black Friday sales. The biggest one is the Xbox Series S has been discounted $50 for the holidays. It is now available for $250 um, at the Microsoft store as well as select retailers. I don't know if, if this deal applies outside of the U.S. and Canada. Uh, but also over 900 games have been... Console games have been discounted and 200 PC games. Um, they've been discounted up to 67% off. Um, select games from Xbox Game Studios discounted to 50% off. Select PC digital games up to 70% off. And gaming accessories are up to 30% off. There is a... I say there's a big list of games. Not that I have them written. But yeah, $50 off the Series S. Up to 30% off certain accessories. Um, other bunch of things are on sale. I mean, PlayStation also has Black Friday sales going on, which... Actually, hold on. I did... Where is it? Yeah. PlayStation Black Friday deals, which are also now live. I think Nintendo Black Friday deals might already be live. Uh, Steam Black Friday sales, I want to say, go live tomorrow, Tuesday the 22nd. Um, but yeah, Black Friday deals for on PlayStation are now live. The sale runs until November 28th. Uh, the end of basically the 28th local time. Uh, discounts on PlayStation Store, PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Gear, and etc. No discounts on PlayStation 5 hardware, which is not a surprise. Not a surprise. Um, select PS5 games are up to 60% off. Select PS4 and PSVR games are up to 65% off. Uh, PlayStation Plus... For one year, uh, is 25% off. So if you want to get a one-year plan of any of PlayStation Plus Essential, Extra, or Premium plans, 25% off for one year. Um, and if you're a current PlayStation Plus member, basically of Essential, you, know, you can save 25% if you want to upgrade to Premium or Extra. Um, accessories are also discounted. Uh, PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers are up to $25 off. 
Uh, you can save $30 on select headsets, save $7 on media remotes, and save $7 on DualSense charging stations. Um, I say, here is the list of games discounted. I actually copied the list of games here, but not on the Xbox One. This must have been fairly easy to copy over on the Xbox One. It wasn't, is my guess, is why I didn't do it there. But uh, some key games discounted. Uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, 60% off. FIFA 23, 40% off. NBA 2K 23, 50% off. Gotham Knights, 40% off. Madden NFL 23, 50% off. Stray, 20% off. Last of Us Part 1, 29% off. GTA 5, 50% off. Cyberpunk 2077, 50% off. Gran Turismo 7, 43% off. Uh, through November 28th. Uh, Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. Didn't it just come out? Yes, it is heavily discounted. I think Saints Row is discounted. Heck, I think I've been seeing some reports that some places have already discounted Sonic Frontiers, and that came out, what, two weeks ago? It's already discounted. Uh, but yeah, Call of Duty Warzone. Another huge success for Activision. Yes, it is free to play. Don't know why it does it. Damn Twitter. Getting worse and worse of late. I'm not going to say why, but I think everyone knows why. Uh, but War Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 has surpassed 25 million players in five days. In five days, it has passed 25 million players. It took the original Call of Duty Warzone 10 days to reach 30 million players. So it is definitely so far tracking well ahead of the original Call of Duty Warzone. Again, Call of Duty Warzone is a free-to-play battle royale game on PS5, Series X, and PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Pretty much everything but the Switch. And your phones. Although I think there is a version on your phone. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain there's some version on your phone. Um, and this also follows the success of Modern Warfare 2. Not that Modern Warfare 2, but the, the reboot. The sequel to the reboot of Modern Warfare, which came out three years ago. Modern Warfare 2. Uh, it did set a record for the franchise by topping $1 billion in worldwide sell-through in its first 10 days. Previous record was 2012's Black Ops 2, which took 15 days to earn $1 billion. <laughs> One billion. Billion. Uh, so yeah, Warzone 2 looking like to be a big success so far, as well as Modern Warfare 2. Um, Sonic co-creator Yuji Naka has been arrested for insider trading. Yuji Naka, the lead programmer on the original Sonic the Hedgehog, and most recently the director for Balan Wonderland, which was a um, critically panned game published by Square, e Square Enix. Um, he has been arrested by Tokyo District Public Prosecutor's Office for insider trade trading under the Financial Instruments and Exchange Act. Uh, Naka learned important information about the mobile title Dragon Quest Tact while working at Square Enix. He was said to have purchased 10,000 shares for about 2.8 million yen or $20,000 bef before information became publicly available. Um, a former employee of Square Enix and another acquaintance um, have also been arrested on suspicion of insider trading. However, they bought 162,000 shares worth, worth about 337 thousand dollars <sighs> Naka yeah again video game programmer designer and producer again he worked on the original Sonic the Hedgehog series Nights into Dreams Sonic Adventure Fantasy Star series and again most recently Bound Wonderland in 2021 uh, Ubisoft is starting to release their games on Steam again starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla Anno 1800 and Roller Champions um with uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla releasing on December 6th. Again, on Steam. Their games have been available on their Ubisoft Connect network as well as the Epic Games Store. Uh, we're constantly evaluating how to bring our games to different audiences wherever they are while providing a consistent player ecosystem through Ubisoft Connect instead of Ubisoft Representative. Uh, but yeah, Ubisoft stopped releasing new games on Steam in 2019 with the last main release being Starlink Battle for Atlas. Uh, and since then, they've been releasing their games on Epic Game Store instead of just Steam, which... Yeah, I guess they're seeing sales weren't that great on Epic Game Store, so they're going to start bringing them over to Steam again. Which Steam is definitely has the is the vast majority of video game sales on PC. 
Um, a couple things from Crystal Dynamics. Um, they gave us a quick update on Perfect Dark, which they are co-developing with Microsoft's first-party studio, The Initiative. Um, we're working on the iconic Perfect Dark game, and the project is going extremely well, said uh, Crystal Dynamics and IDO CEO Phil Rogers during Embracer Group's latest earnings call. Uh, what's been so promising internally is seeing how our team took on this opportunity. A new way of working. If we think about the future of how we work collaboration across studios, across time zones, across geographies, across different companies will all become more common. So it is great to see the team at the initiative and our team across Crystal Studios working so well together. So yeah, Perfect Dark is um, co-developed by First Party Xbox Studio the Initiative and Crystal Dynamics, which was, again was recently acquired by Embracer Group. And Perfect Dark is in development for the Xbox Series X and S and the PC. And one last bit of gaming news, again from Crystal Dynamics. They held, they um, had a survey asking people interest on the legacy of Kane series and to say they were, it was overwhelming response. Um, there were over 100,000 responses to the survey compared to what they normally have. One to 3,000. It's a big jump from what they were expecting. We wanted to gain a community perspective on what players are looking for should we revisit the land of Nosgoth and our iconic IP legacy, okay? In the past, we found that surveys typically get between 1,000 and 3,000 responses, but when we asked about folk about Legacy of Cain, we received over 100,000 responses. 73,000 gamers completed it entirely, and if you're one of them, we thank you very much, and we appreciate it was quite an effort given the survey we pr um, was pretty ex extensive. So I'm hoping we get new Legacy of Kane games. Single player games. No multiplayer crap. Just single player story based. Action adventure. Uh, reboot. Or maybe a remake of the original game. Who knows. We'll see. We'll see where things are in the coming years. If they announce anything. Oh, yeah, but there have been five mainline releases in the Legacy of Kane series. The original entry, Blood Omen Legacy of Kane, released in 96 for the PS1 and PC in 97. The most recent entry, Legacy of Kane Defiance, released in 2003 for the PS2, Xbox, original Xbox, and PC. So that is going to do it for the gaming news this week. As always, if you've been watching this on YouTube, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment if you have anything else to add whether it's on our VG charts estimates, our monthly sales comparisons, or any gaming news. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. See you all in the next video.